Hello, this time a slightly dis different video. Today I wanna talk about how to draw in PowerPoint. Um, for the ones who are preparing for the virtual review board, we have the challenge that virtually we cannot draw on a whiteboard. There's different strategies and I think most people will go with paper and pen and this is perfectly fine. Me personally, I don't have the best handwriting and I'm not feeling so comfortable with paper and pen. So um, over the course of the next six months with a couple of study partners, we developed the concept how to draw in PowerPoint. And this video should in the next five to 10 minutes show you how, how I'm doing it and I'm looking forward to your feedback, what I can improve, what is your style, what's your thought. So first step, I choose a design. Um, this is my personal design, but I, um, I think it just looks better if you have an, a style applied. Um, just choose a style which is normal for Salesforce. Next, um, the agenda and stuff you all know, I wanna sh um, focus on three elements, data model, system landscape, and sandbox model. So the first one is the data model. So I change it to the layout to blank, and I start to draw. Um, this is my base one. Then I change the font size to 12. So I have more space. Start with the account, copy paste, make it a little bit diff bigger, um, make it white because this will be my control L is so it's left, home, align text top. This will be my OWD, um, owner, wall and record type. Once I'm done, group it and I'm done. I have my first base component and I just use this, like I usually do one up here, then I just copy one after another. And that's actually the first part already. So then I have my second one, contact, OW. So I fill out all the um, C control by control by parent, for example. Owner is my sales agent. Volume to mill. Record type customer. Then I start to draw the arrows. Um, sorry, I I always use the the elbow arrow because it makes for nicer looking. You see, and I use the um, the anchor points here, so when I move it, it becomes easy. Then I change the color to black, I make it a little bit more a deep, bigger weight, and I'm already done. So this is already the second one. So I now I have a black arrow, which is the right color and the right relationship. Um, in order to make master detail relationships, for example, like um, quote to quote opportunity to a quote to quote line item, I use, I change the color to red. And for the judges to also know what I mean, I create a little um, legend at the top left. And this is first for custom custom object, large data volume, external objects, big object, and so forth. You get the gist. And then for stand uh, lookup relationship, LR, also detail relationship. And then I show here, ah, move it to the back. And I add the arrow here. And then I do the same with this one. Oops. And I'm already done. For the custom object cloud data volume and so forth, I do it very similar. I take a small element here. Then I write cast. Oh, I have to change the font size to 10. Cast is for my color scheme usually um, green, large data volume, because it's something I have to ship, um, look out for. I change this first and I take it to something like orange. And so can you, and oops. LDV. Okay, so now when I create my first custom object, let's say uh, payments, I take the custom, I take the object, copy paste this element, 
and group them again. And this way, hang on a second. This way I can super easily, I, I did this, super easily create all my relationships, create all my, and stuff like that. And for example, since I make often not mistakes, but I have to optimize the, throughout my solutioning, I can just change the data model on the fly. And this is already all about the data model. That's it. I mean, it takes a little bit of practice and oftentimes this one becomes a little bit smaller or bigger. You have to plan yourself. I personally have a style actually other way around. Um, oops. Accounts and contacts are in the center. Then in order to draw person accounts, I do another little thingy around here. Send to back person account and send it to the bottom. And now we have a nice indication that we also use person accounts and that I know how person accounts work. So I usually use the same concept of at the top, I have something like leads, tasks, events. At the right side, I have price book, products, opportunities, quotes, or everything that's around selling. At the bottom, I have everything around service cloud. And on the left side, I have additional information which I need for my particular um, scenario. And I am really a fan of the grouping because this makes it easy. And you see here, changing the data model is super easy. Um, one more thing I'd like, to, so yeah, good. This is already about data modeling. I think this concludes data modeling. Now I wanna go to the next, to system landscape. This is very similar. So I started, I start immediately without thinking, we all know, firewall. So the firewall gets, oh, hang on a second, gets also orange, it's also dangerous, and gets down to 12. Then, ETL, always on the left side, always on, always on, not always on premise, but most of the time on premise, ESP. Then I give my integration layer a nice color, move it a little bit down and leave a little spot here because oftentimes I have something in between. Then um, I start to draw the first boxes. Again, here I take a box, I make it empty. Uh, this for an example, at the bottom right, I always have my Active Directory or my LDAP. Also here I have a standardized system. I wanna walk you through very quickly. Again, make the size small. And then we usually have here an ERP and we have a data warehouse. And um, here, I usually don't use the elbow one, but the, the straight, line, uh, straight arrows. But again, I change the white to make it a little bit more deeper. And especially for the Salesforce part. So in the center, I have my Salesforce with my domain enabled, of course. Again, as always, align text bottom. Then um, I take this arrow. This goes straight to Salesforce. Um, uh, format, we have to make the arrow two ways, back and forth. And this is now the trick a little bit here. I add some text because as we know, there is a, between Salesforce and ESP, you usually have OAuth, REST, JWT. Group that, done. Next one, where, because over here it's very similar, but this time it's bulk. And I'm already done here, sorry. Um, then I, this, the structure I follow. Ah, yeah. Then I start to do this, use the same concept. You see, I'm a huge fan of copy paste, makes life easy. At the bottom, I draw my sales cloud or service cloud, depends what I have. And the then on top of that, I draw my communities, so for example, partner community. And if we have a customer community as well, draw both. Okay. 
then at the top right, I put all my, in, within Salesforce, I put my app exchange packages, for example, Conga, Composer, here. Just make sure you have enough space. Ah, I forgot something. I, of course, add um, some text here. And I say, this is my data model system landscape. OK, so I have done this. Then I have to add more boxes. Again, I group. Um, then the other way around, let's say we have a web-based application which we want to connect to Salesforce via, via our ESP, same procedure, web-based app. So I put my on-premise at the bottom, my web-based applications on the, on the right side above the ESP. As always, if I know, I add which integration we are going to use. For example, here we do the web server flow, or sometimes we do Canvas, whatever it feels. Then um, I like st standardizing. Here I have my file storage, for example, SharePoint. Then on, um, because they usually connect to Salesforce directly. Okay, copy paste. Just make sure that the arrows goes in both directions. I made a mistake here because the data warehouse. So. Just make sure the arrows go in both directions. For example, my file storage will connect via Salesforce files connect. Then at the top right, I have my social login, for example, Facebook. Above sale, again, there's the arrow. Then up, um, don't forget to group. Then above, I have my mobile apps, let's see. Salesforce mobile, if we have a customer mobile app, then we do this as well. Customer mobile. Um, at the left side, I put my website because we almost always have a website. Ah, diff, actually, use diff because it is the same. And the website contains something like a lead form. Again, I use an arrow to indicate that we have some kind of connection here because there is a connection between the website and the lead form. And we use web to lead, for example, here. For the, you would have to correct the arrow because the arrow only goes in one direction. But this is easy here done. Here we are. The same here would be also another arrow. I can copy this one because it's very similar. The only difference is it's the uh, uh, OAuth REST user agent flow. And this already makes for an almost perfect system landscape. What's missing is like, like let's say Einstein Analytics, Salesforce Marketing Cloud and so forth. I put it on the top left here, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Clean up a little bit after myself. And I'm done. So this already concludes my system landscape. Of course, there's a lot more to do. Here I would then use another um, elbow arrow elbow, arrow. So this way, and this would conclude it. And lastly, about the same system about my uh, develop CID, CICD pipeline. I would do it very similar. I drop my box, draw my boxes, connect them with arrows. And one more trick I found about role hierarchies. What I find very helpful, I use the smart arts for hierarchy here. I choose the one first one and I just start typing away. So at the top we have the CEO, then we have um, 
USA, for example, team sales Denver, and then here we have for example, the service team, NA, and so forth. And this makes it very easy to draw your, your role hierarchy very and very clean and very similar. I do the same concept for, um, for my governance model. So at the top, we have a steering committee. Then we have a center of excellence. And so, and here we have the architecture review board. Parallel to the center of excellence, we have a PMO and so forth. And this concludes my super short introduction onto how to draw in PowerPoint. Many people prefer to do it on pen and paper. I totally get that. This is just something we developed over the time. I, me personally, I like it. I think this also is something which will be post COVID always be the norm. Let's say I'm looking forward to your feedback and have a good day.